I'm a pretty emotionally intelligent dude. I've noticed that there's only room for my emotions when they're convenient for the woman that's asking me to be emotionally intelligent. That any emotional labor I do that's not for her convenience or not that she, something she specifically asked for, that either goes unnoticed or when I'm saying something that's not favorable, the shit gets used against me and it becomes about how she feels about what I said and not about the shit that Ladies, I said. Ladies, he making some too much sense. Somebody cry. Somebody cry. I'm, I'm, Somebody cry. So what, all, all I'm saying, all I'm saying, because, because saying that, all right, now we got our own money, we want y'all to be emotionally intelligent, that's a great fucking argument until it becomes a real life situation and you start to deal with an emotionally intelligent and you realize it ain't been enough of them in your life and you don't know what to do with that type of man. You're not lying. This You're is not fact. lying. This is you, fact. Sweetheart. This is my, fact. My, my baby, if all you done had is dudes that don't know how to express themselves, don't come sitting in front of me. A nigga that know how to express himself complaining when I goddamn express myself. You understand what I'm saying? YouTube is your boy Ron back with another video. If you're new to the platform, welcome to the tribe. By the end of this video, I hope you subscribe. So today we are going to be discussing Samantha Lee. Uh, this is a woman that I've actually had on a few of my reactions. Um, I had no idea that this was Tyrese's ex-wife um, that everybody was telling me about. Um, I know a few people, um, one in, one person in particular who's been on my channel before, Dino, uh, he mentioned like, hey, you know, be care be careful of, uh, about reacting to her, man. She's a chameleon um, because of the situation with Tyrese. Because I'm like, and you know what? I should have known that she probably had a little bit of fame to her because when I looked at her page, and I noticed some of the other people that's been on her channel before. We're talking like big time celebrities like the game. I can think of off the top of my head a rap, you know, the rapper, the game that been on her channel before. I should have known then, like, huh, oh, something's off here. You know, most YouTube content creators in this space, they don't got celebrities on their channel. So then when I just so when people was telling me to watch out for her, she might be a chameleon, I was like, all right. And recently, Tyrese um, has shed some light on the situation. And I got to say, man, considering the stuff that she reacts to and talks about on her channel, it definitely goes against everything that Tyrese spoke of as far as what happened in their divorce settlement. Divorce settlement. All right. So, um... I'm going to be playing parts of a clip that was shown on Pink Book Lessons channel. Shout out to Pink Book Lessons. I love her content. And he's going to share his side of the story. And I'm just going to compare and contrast based on what I've seen on her channel. All right, let's keep it. Came into this court case with a lot of different thoughts and feelings just kind of running through my mind. I'm still waiting on TMZ, Atlanta Journal, and various other news outlets to get the transcripts from my actual divorce trial to be unsealed. The judge illegally sealed our court documents because he wanted to minimize his exposure about his abuse and power his heavy hand and his rulings being completely egregious. Also, he didn't want anyone to see that every time I attempted to talk to explain anything or any time that my attorney attempted to explain anything during the divorce trial, after waiting two full years, swimming, swimming in legal fees that I never asked for, We finally had our day in court to then have the conduct of the judge, Kevin M. Former, to be completely abusive, egregious, all over the place. 
I respect the law. Um, I don't have a criminal record. In my 15 years of having my first child up to now, I've never missed a child support payment, even when I did not have it financially. I did whatever I can do to make sure that I never, ever missed a payment. I want you guys to understand something that you don't understand about this particular process. And I'll make it short and sweet. Me and my attorney attempted to shed light on the abuse of power, the fact that this man as a sitting judge in his private chambers in front of my attorney, a black woman, other black women that work for Tanya Mitchell Graham's law firm, as well as a black male associate who has a mother and sisters just like we all do. He said, you need to go out there and tell your client to shut the fuck up, put your foot on his neck. We went on record and said that that's what he said in his chambers. He also said, I don't care if Samantha is a gold digging bitch, blah, 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 went on to continue his sentence. That's what was said in the private chambers. I was not back there. So for my lawyers to come out and look physically rattled, my attorney, Tanya Mitchell Graham, had to practice a level of restraint on levels that I know took a whole lot for her to do. This right here. So you mean to tell me that this judge had the gall to speak like that to the attorneys? And didn't think that that was going to come back on him? See, this is see, this is why, ah, oh man, I tell you, bro, this is why I never been a fan of the, the ju judicial system, man. Because you can tell some of these judges, bro, they take some of these cases so personal, man, based on something that done happened to them in their life, or somebody that they related to that they know that don't got nothing to do with them, nothing to do with them. So I'm like, they, they they need to start doing a better job picking these judges, man. Because these a lot of these, I ain't going to say a lot, but there are some judges out there that be having these ulterior motives, man. And it, and it be based off of something that happened in their personal life. And it don't got nothing to do with the person that they're um, judging. It, it's, it's so weird, bro. Let's keep it moving. This right here is the following day after Tyrese appeared in court in Fulton County, Georgia, where a judge ordered him to pay over $636,000 in child support fees. $237,000 of it will go to his ex-wife, while $399,000 of it will go to her lawyers. And to top it all off, most of the money that he had to pay didn't even go to her. It went, it went to the lawyer fees. Y'all gonna see why y'all y'all gonna see why that's important in a second, man. Let's keep it moving. This is not about black woman versus black man. It's about saying something is unhinged about this lawyer. Sorry, about this 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 judge. Every time Samantha would talk, her lawyer would get up and talk. It was open season to let them say whatever they want and present their case. Whenever me and my lawyer attempted to talk or say anything, you guys seen the film, you seen the tape. He was aggressive towards me and my attorney. And after going through an unexpected divorce, signing up for a bunch of retainers and law legal fees that I'd never asked for. If you ask me, I got married to do it for the rest of my life. That wasn't the plan for Samantha. We are where we are. I've been doing the best I can to pick up my chin off the ground, my heart being broken in any bitty pieces and trying to pick it all up and pull it together. So now there was a judgment 
and before that judgment could go into the clerk's office, key word, to the clerk's office before his judgment becomes officially legal, $10,690 a month for a three-year-old. Everything about his conduct is what we decided to make a priority. Let's go ahead and run this conduct and shed light on the conduct, us not having our legal American due process in court. You're going to win some, you're going to lose some, but everybody has a right and an opportunity to get in court and present their just due process. That is what the law is. I just want to ask you all a question. When you have either been to court yourself or seen it on TV, what is the first thing that happens? The judge comes in, they make everybody stand up, your honor, everyone says good morning, good evening, and then the judge sits down, everyone sits down. As soon as it's time for someone to testify, they raise their right hand and they say these words, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, under penalty of perjury. At this point, with what I and a whole lot of people have experienced and still experiencing, when it comes to that, they might as well get rid of that. They might as well take the whole right hand truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth, under penalty, they might as well just get rid of that. In the family law court system, under penalty of perjury, it is open season for women to tell lies. Whatever version of the story, whatever twist, even if you come up on the stand to testify, you lie at 501 and get caught in a lie at 502, and then you change the story at 504, and this is all happening in real time, and the court reporter is there typing all of the lies and the inconsistencies of the story every step of the way, under penalty of perjury. Yeah, and the judge is going to ignore her lies because the person they're trying to nail down is you. And you're sitting there. Your relationship with your child or children is completely compromised. You're sitting there. Asshole ripped up from all the legal fees. You're getting your ass served on a plate. Ripped up legal fees that you never asked for, that you never signed up for. It doesn't matter if you have money or not. After swearing under penalty of perjury, these are facts. Samantha Gibson got caught in at least 25 lies, maybe 30, under oath. She said, I kicked her and my one-year-old baby out of the house. She said, I kicked her out of the house. She claims on record under penalty of perjury that I changed the locks on my house. She claims under penalty of perjury that I kicked her and a one-year-old baby out to the streets and I cut off all the credit cards. These are her words that she put on a legal document under penalty of perjury. She lied. I was in New Jersey shooting a movie. I got on an airplane and left the set four hours early before I was supposed to. I flew to Atlanta attempting to save my marriage and my family in any capacity I could. She got wind of the fact that I was flying home. Her and her mother, stepfather, her trainer, best friend, Shandrika, they all ran to the house. 
six, seven deep, packed up 50 boxes, left the house on their own. They were never kicked out. They were never put out. That's a lie under penalty of perjury. The credit card that I cut off was not her personal credit card. It was a credit card from a joint account that me and Samantha shared. You leave me, you take my daughter from me, from us. You want me to leave my credit card active that we both shared so it can be open season to charge my credit card on whatever you want? That doesn't make any logical sense. You packed up all your and left the house while I was out of town working on the movie? I have to go back out of town to go finish making this movie? You think I'm about to leave my house wide open for you and all your friends to do a home invasion again and steal all the shit out of the house? I still don't know what she took to this day. I got robbed. So let me get this straight. So you mean to tell me this woman is parading on YouTube like she is such a traditional woman and she values what men go through but you did some snake shit like this and then turn around and lie in court and say that you got kicked out and then try to make it look like he was trying to shut you out when in reality all he was just trying to do was protect whatever he could left because you left and took what god knows what with you are you serious right now You know, one of the things that I've learned about women is that, especially female nature, is that women are selfish by nature. But when you witness it like this and you hear things like this, man, it's like, what? Like, is there ever a limit? Like, really? Is there? Cause this, this is just, this is just shysty, bro. Let's keep it moving. I got robbed. <laughs> yes, we resided in the same house, but I'm the only one with legal paperwork that says that I actually own the home. So technically I was actually robbed. A home invasion and there were six accomplices that stole all out the house. What did they steal? What did they take? Her belongings? Did they take any of my belongings? I don't know. I wasn't there. She never sent me any photos or videos of anything that was taken out of the house. But one thing's for sure, I never put her and my daughter out of the house. And when the locks were changed, and I got the receipt with the date, the name of the locksmith company that I used, the locks were changed four days after she moved out on her own. Because after talking to my team, they was like, yo, what if she comes back? The door, the door, the code, what if they come back? They'd be like, oh, we left something in the basement. It could be anything. You should get your locks changed, bro. You're out of town. So that's what I did. But is it okay to lie under penalty of perjury? If you're in the family court system, it's open season for lies. You can say whatever you want to say under penalty of perjury. You will never be in contempt of court for being caught on as a liar, as a woman. You'll never deal with any repercussions. You'll never be arrested. You'll never have anything to happen to you. And you have literally somebody's reputation up, their career up, business deals, opportunities, things that were brewing and going on. You have messed up your family dynamic with the lies that have been documented on a legal binding piece of paper under penalty of perjury so now in closing there was a paragraph in my prenuptial agreement that clearly states that after we signed a 75 85 page prenuptial agreement and document we didn't just sign the last page <laughs> we signed and put our signature on the corner of every page of the document she had her own lawyer i never hired her 
I never paid the retainer for her attorney that did her prenup. I did mine. She did hers. Her own individual counsel to go over everything and all of the terms of this prenuptial agreement. One of the terms in the prenuptial agreement. I'm only speaking on this because this is public knowledge. One of the terms inside the prenuptial agreement that no lawyer, no judge, nobody could undo or change is that if Samantha wants to argue about the realness or the validity or the legal binding document called a prenuptial agreement, if she wants to argue anything about anything that we signed off on and put our signatures on, then Samantha Gibson is 100% responsible for covering all of her own legal fees pertaining to arguing about anything that has to do with the validity of our prenuptial agreement. So in other words, that 399000 that he gave up for the attorney fees, he was never supposed to pay that, basically. So once again, this just goes to show you, bro, like, oh my God, this is, this is not a good look, man. And keep in mind, bro, I'm, I'm a, cause this is already getting too long, but later on in the video, and I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just link, um, the video pink book lessons did on, cause you might not even want to watch cause the video that she did is almost an hour long, man. So I try, you know, you know, you guys, I really don't, I barely go over 20 minutes, but I had to cover this, man. Cause people have been bringing this to my attention for weeks now, ever since I first started reacting to her. This woman was actually making over six figures before she ever met him. And because of him, she started making even more money on top of the other streams of income that she does have, including having a hundred over a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube. So, you know, she's making good money on her own. Did she really need him to pay the attorney fees? Nah, she was just being selfish. Does she really need 230 something thousand a year in, in, in child support? No, she's just being selfish. So this is a woman on YouTube who are calling other women selfish because they want traditional treatment and aren't traditional themselves. And here you are showing the same kind of behavior about the women that you claim you're, you're trying to hold accountable on your channel. So not only is this woman a, is a chameleon, she's just a downright hypocrite. But if y'all disagree or agree, please let me know what y'all think in the comments. If you're new to the platform, please subscribe. OGs, I appreciate the love and support. Make sure y'all hitting that bell notification. That way y'all know what I'm uploading. Hit the like button because it helps with the algorithm. It helps me reach a broader audience. Also, look out for the travel vlog tra um, channel, Unplugged Traveler. Link is in the description and pinned in the comments. To the next video, y'all. Deuces.